Hold on to the high aspirations. Hold on to your ambitions. Don't settle for compromise, even if the challenge is great. You can always do it. Allah puts the potential inside of you once you hold on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold on to the rope of Allah and you can face any, for, any force on this earth. Actually, there is no force on earth that can stand in the face of a Muslim once they hold on to the rope of Allah. This was the case of all our great generations, the early generations, the Salaf, our predecessors. This is how they were. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the great Khalifa, one day he was with his, uh, with his friend, with his servant, Dukain. He said, Ya Dukain, Wallahi inna li nafsan tawaqa. Ya Dukain, I have a very ambitious soul. I can't settle for, for the daily ambitions of people. I'm not satisfied with that. I have a very ambitious soul. Tuqtu ila al-ilmi fahassaltu. I craved for knowledge and I got that. وَتُخْتُ إِلَىٰ بِنْتِ الْخَلِيفَةِ أَنْ أَتَزَوَّجَهَا فَكَانَ لِي مَا أَرَدْ I wanted to marry the daughter of the Khalifa and I had that. وَتُخْتُ إِلَىٰ الْإِمَارَةِ فَحَصَّلْتُهَا And I wanted to become like the, the prince or the, the leader of one of the provinces of Islam and I was given that. ثُمَّ تُخْتُ إِلَىٰ الْخِلَافَةِ فَحَصَّلْتُهَا Then I longed for the Khilafah to become the chief of the believers and I got that. Very ambitious, he doesn't settle. He doesn't give up. He doesn't rest. These were the people who created the history of Islam, the glory of Islam. He said, now I, Wallahi, have the ambition of making it to paradise. Never settle for less than paradise. This is how you can make it. The Prophet ﷺ was the great example in high aspirations. Because, and I'm going to mention some of his great ambitions, some of his patience, some of his dedication, examples of his greatness. You know, one day, but I'm going to talk about his students now, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. One day when Amr ibn al-As was fighting against the Byzantines, he needed some help because they were greatly outnumbered. So he sent back to the Khalifa Abu Bakr. He said to him, asking for more soldiers. He said, send me at least 4,000 soldiers. I need 4,000 soldiers. Otherwise, we have no chances of overcoming our enemy. What did Abu Bakr do? He sent to him four individuals. Four. Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, Khalid ibn Maslama, Al-Miqdad ibn Amr, Ubad ibn Samit, four individuals. Ubad ibn Samit, four individuals, and he sent with them a letter to Amr ibn al-As. When Amr ibn al-As saw the four, four people, he was shocked. When he opened the letter and he read it, Abu Bakr said to him in the letter, You asked me for 4,000 soldiers, and I sent you what you asked for. I sent you four individuals. Each one of them stands for a thousand people. Now, how many people do you and I stand for? This is how they changed the course of history. This is how they made the great glory of Islam. You don't need great numbers to change history. You don't need great numbers to create a wonderful civilization. You just need individuals. One of them is, is better than a thousand people. These are the people who make our future. And these are the people we are supposed to build today. And this is the methodology we're supposed to follow. So where are your aspirations? How did these individuals reach each of them be equivalent at least to 1,000 people? How did they do that? With great aspirations, powerful ambitions, with determination, unwavering hearts. They never gave up. One day, the great Khalifa as well, Harun al-Rashid, he reached the borders of Constantinople, which is Istanbul today. It was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. And that was the first time for the Muslim army to reach the borders of that city. And the Byzantines gave up, so they paid the jizya for a few years. And there, the leader was a woman. When she died, a man took over. His name was Nukfur. So he sent a letter to 
Baghdad to Harun al-Rashid, to the Islamic capital, Baghdad. He sent to me, he said, the king who was before me, or the queen who was before me, she gave you a very high status. She overestimated your true worth or your weight. And she gave you so much of our wealth, of our money, of our assets. And this is the weakness of women. Once you receive my letter, once you read my letter, send back everything you received from her. Give it back to me and even ransom yourself with more than that. And if you don't do this, then I will come and get you. The letter came to, or fell in the hands of Amir al muminin Harun al-Rashid, who had the, 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 the dignity of a Muslim, the high aspirations of the Muslim, the courage of a Muslim that never settles for low aspirations. When he received the letter, he wrote back straight away. He wrote from Amir al Mu'mini, Min Amir al Mu'mini Harun, Ila Kalbir Rumi Nukfur. From, from the, the chief of the believers, Harun, to the dog of the Romans. I have received your book, and my answer is what you see, not what you hear. And he marched to him and subdued his army. And he paid the jizya again. These were our ancestors. This is why they were the peak of civilization at a time when the rest of humanity was wallowing in darkness, in filth, in backwardness. This is why the Muslims excelled in every area of life. High aspirations. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, says, Wallahi, la sawtul qa'qa'i fil jaysh khayrun min alfi muqatil. The voice of Al-Qa'qa in the battlefield is better than a thousand fighters. The voice of one person. This is how our ancestors were. So what about ourselves today? You see, we're great numbers. We're more than a billion individuals, a billion people, a fifth of the world's population. But you could get a million people and they can hardly stand for one person. That's the, that's the illness of our ummah. This is what we have to work on. Now the Prophet ﷺ was the great example. I will share with you some of his great actions and his high aspirations after just al-istiraha.